right. You ready over there? Sergeant Arms, ready, brother? All right. Good morning. My name is Costa Constantinidis, and I am chair of the Committee on Environmental Protection. Today we'll hold a vote on a package of bills known collectively as the Climate Mobilization Act. Their introductions 1253C, 1252, 1251, 1318, 1317, 276, 1031, and 1032, as well as Resolution 66 and a pre-considered resolution opposing the Williams Pipeline. I want to keep this brief so the Act's other sponsors can speak and we can quickly proceed to a vote. This package of bills will be the single lar largest carbon reduction effort in any city, anywhere, not just New York City, that has been put forward. By our calculations, it will result in the equivalent of taking more than one million cars off the road by 2030 and create measurable decreases in nitros, nitro, nitron oxides, sulfur oxides, and particulate matter that foul our air and contribute to higher than average asthma rates. It will be our biggest and, our, it will be our biggest and dirtiest buildings on the path of meeting our 40 by 30 and 80 by 50 goals. It will also lead to a creation of thousands of good middle class jobs that will pave the way for the 21st century green economy. Finally, this passage also includes Intro 1252, which enables PACE financing to offer low interest loans to building owners to help cover the cost of going green. These loans will be spread out over the useful life of the system installed so that the owner often sees a net gain due to energy savings from the more efficient technology. One thing I can say with confidence is, with confidence that is not true in any way, is that 1253 or anything here is rushed. 1253 is the product of two plus years of hard work in conjunction with the administration, building owners, architects, building fishing experts, climate scientists, activists, and builds on a decade's worth of work that began with the passage of Locals Law 84 and 87. New York City's buildings account for around 70% of our greenhouse gas emissions, and more than half of all our built square footage in the city is in the 25,000 square feet and over. The 50,000 largest, uh, largest buildings targeted by this bill, 1% of our floor space, so that's 50,000 out of 1.1 million buildings, constitute 30% of the overall emissions. Contrast the city's stock of one to four family units, which represents 82 of the floor space, 82% of the floor space, but only 19% of the emissions. That's why we had to start the, the conversation around these larger buildings, because frankly, that's where the emissions are. The provision of this bill overlap with other bills, like Intro 12, uh, 1317, allowing large wind turbines to be more Ill, uh, built more easily in the city, and 1318, which directs the city to study a phase out of our fossil fuel power plants. Together, they send the strongest possible signal to the energy market that New York City is ready to phase out fossil fuels and convert to a greener grid. We do this in a way that gives New Yorkers flexibility, in a way that takes into account everyone's contributions to city emissions and what can be reasonably contributed to reduce those emissions. Finally, in opposing the Williams Pipeline, we understand that the climate emergency we face necessitates saying no to new fossil fuel infrastructure and that new pipelines that will be operational for the next 30 or 40 years only lock us in to further impending disaster. It's on us now. We here on this committee have an opportunity to set the table for what has the potential to be one of the most transformative moments for our city. When our grandkids look back on this time, they'll ask us what we did to ensure that there is a sustainable New York. Let us be sure that when they ask, we've got a good answer for them. I want to thank the committee staff, and it's a long list, but I want to thank Jeff Baker, Laura Popa, Nicola Bean, Austin, Brooke, I don't think she's here, uh, Tears and NASA, Samara Swanson, our attorney, uh, Megan Chen, Nadia Johnson, Jonathan Seltzer, Ricky Chawla, and my legislative counsel uh, and good friend and ally in this who's been with me the whole way, Nicholas Wazowski, Terrence Cullen as well. This has been a humongous team effort, and I want to thank everyone on staff. If I missed your name, it was not on purpose, but I know the great contribution that you've made. Thank you. And with, uh, we, we, do, we do this here. 
And I think uh, Councilmember Espinal and Richards both have statements on their legislation. Well, uh, I, I clearly just want to congratulate you, uh, Mr. Chair, on all the great work you have done uh, to get these uh, bills passed, but also the time you took to really listen to all parties and figure out a way where we can craft legislation and that is responsible, but also responsible to the environment. And I think that's the number one goal. Uh, what are we doing as a city to lead uh, this country and this globe uh, to make sure that we are uh, one of the greenest cities in, in, this, in this globe to uh, deal with the effects of climate change? As, as we uh, heard in the report, we have 12 years uh, to, to reverse the damage we've done in the past 100 years. And I think that uh, greening our bills is the one and only way that we're going to really start a real conversation on how to get there. I'm proud of the bills that are in this package. I am the sponsor of the bill that would require green and solar roofs on new developments and any development that undergoes a major uh, roof construction and repair. Uh, we are joining cities like Toronto, uh, Portland, uh, San Francisco that already have these mandates. And this will mean uh, cleaner air quality, better air quality, uh, water retention, um, you know, uh, lowering the temperature of our cities so our cities can be more livable. Uh, we know numbers show that every single year we have over 1,200 people uh, who die because of respiratory illnesses. We have communities like in East New York and North Brooklyn where children are suffering with asthma. And the science shows that green roofs uh, can help improve that air quality and improve the lives of those New Yorkers. So we are really setting uh, uh, the bar high here. And I am proud to be part of, of this movement. And uh, thank you again for your leadership. And thank you to all the staff that has really put in all the work uh, to make this happen. And I'm glad to join my colleagues, Donna Richards and Steve Levin, uh, in this Green Roof package. Uh, we're really making history here. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Espinal. I'll turn it over now to Councilmember Richards. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and to all the staff and all the advocates and uh, everybody on every side of the debate, I want to thank everyone for coming together uh, to pass a bold, 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 bold piece of legislation and package uh, on today. Uh, for some, this is a theoretical conversation, and it, it may just sound like we're passing uh, another package of bills here in the Council today, but for communities like mine, uh, which are the Rockaways and Rosedale and Southeast Queens, where on a day like today when we have slight hint of rain, uh, people's basements are underwater. This is uh, reality for us. This is life and death. This is social and economic um, for us as well. Um, I, I just go back to remembering those days uh, when we had no electricity. This is why, <laughs> um, you know, the green roof spell is, is, is bigger than just putting a solar panel uh, on a roof for those senior citizens uh, who I remember coming into the office who lost all their medicine, um, to those mothers who had nothing on their uh, backs for their newborns. This is not a theoretical conversation. We have to really get bold in addressing the way we deal uh, with climate change. Uh, I, and this is why I'm going to also just speak on the resolution for a second as well um, regarding um, uh, the pipeline. Uh, and that's why I'm proud to, to stand with uh, Chair Costa to call on DEC to reject the construction of the Northeast Supply Enhancement Pipeline through New York Harbor. Um, once again, this is personal for me as a representative of one of the hardest hit communities during Hurricane Sandy. The impacts of climate change crippled the lives of many of my constituents, both financially, socially, and emotionally. And today, as we pass this resolution, I'm reminded once again of those faces of single moms with newborns and senior citizens who were lined up at electric lists at my electric list office looking for food, pampers, and toiletries. Furthermore, I'm reminded of my visit to fracking farms in, Pencil in Pennsylvania a few years ago where I witnessed the devastation firsthand of what families were dealing with uh, when it came to their water supply. Um, so I don't want to pre prelong this anymore because I know we're here to vote, but when you went out and I, and I describe my experience, I think I went with Food and Water Watch a few years ago, when you saw families <laughs> who had no fresh water in the United States of America, um, I knew that this was the right thing to do. Um, so we need to move towards 100% uh, 
renewable future. And I think today we're taking some major steps uh, to ensure we get there. So I want to congratulate you, Mr. Chairman. I also want to congratulate Samara Swanson, who I know for many years has been trying to push the envelope uh, on these issues, and I'm just happy to be here uh, to see these things come to fruition. So with that being said, on behalf of my constituents, I happily vote aye on this package. I, I want to thank my staff. I was remiss in not thanking Terrence Cohen, my communications director, who's been amazing, Nicholas Rolson, my chief of staff, Nikki Kokinos, Josephine Germosen, Joy Chowdhury, Michael Corbett. None of us have slept in a long time, but it's all worth it. And to my son, Nicholas, this is for you, bud. I'd like to recommend that he has to vote on the, all the bills. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on environmental protection. All items are coupled. Chair Constantinidis. I vote aye. Espinal. Proudly vote aye. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Thank you to the chair. Thank you to the sponsors of the bill. This is an important moment for all of us. I want to bring the voices of Red Hook and Sunset Park, who for so many years have been fighting for env environmental justice. They're looking to us for leadership because we are their voice. We are their intentions on the ground. Red Hook uh, was also inundated by water six to eight feet. Um, that is what drove me to run for city council in the first place to represent those who have been feeling invisible and silent in this conversation, impacting the climate change world is impacting our black and brown families, our workers on the waterfront. And so this is a proud moment for my district. I also want to say, you know, on a personal level, I grew up in Texas in El Paso where we uh, when, since I was a kid, have been thinking about water, uh, this desert land that we're going to feel the imp we are already feeling the impacts over there. And so I'm thinking about this on a national level and what we're doing here. And, and uh, the chair really spoke to this. This is the most aggressive, um, fast forward moving piece of legislation. And it was it was because of an intergenerational conversation that happened that moved us to make this happen, even against. Uh, the powers that be. And we said no to them and we said yes to all of you, the people. And so I'm just really proud to be here. We heard from testimony and, and, and some of the strongest testimony came from some young people that not, on, not only understand the issue, understand that this is, this is gonna impact them even more and their children and their, their children's children. So thank you for being here today and witnessing this moment in, his, in history. And I vote aye on all. Richards. Happily vote aye. Yeager. Mr. Chairman, may I be excused to explain my vote? Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, congratulations are due to you, sir, because this has been a long, uh, lifelong dream since uh, even before you were elected to this body uh, to try to enact reasonable uh, and permanent um, environmental change to the way we do things in New York City. And uh, that is true, and you've accomplished that, and you've also done so wisely um, by reaching out to all the people in New York uh, who had various interests in why they had concerns about this bill, such as the religious organizations that had issues with whether or not their very old houses of worship would be able to be accommodated, our hospitals who had very real concerns about whether or not they would have to make choices uh, between uh, engaging in life-saving measures or simply turning off a switch uh, to try to knock down their numbers. So you've worked very hard. Uh, that is true. That's not just being said by me, but that's going to be the story of this when it's all written, uh, and I congratulate you. I will vote aye on all with the exception of the unnumbered pre-considered resolution. I'm not voting aye on that. I'm not voting against it. I will abstain, and I'll explain why. Um, uh, we uh, have The reason that's a pre-considered resolution with no number is because it hasn't been introduced in this council yet. Um, that it is going to be introduced today on the Florida Council. The process here in the Council, the tradition of this Council, uh, the way that uh, it's been going since long before I got here, long before I was born probably, is that we introduce a bill, we introduce a resolution, we have a hearing. Subsequent thereto, we deliberate, we have a second hearing, we vote, perhaps we've changed things, and then we report it to the floor of the Council whereupon there is a vote. This bill had a hearing, this resolution had a hearing uh, 72 hours ago, it has not been introduced to the Florida Council, has not, in my estimation, had the due deliberation necessary for us to make a determination whether or not this is good public policy. It may very well be. There are very real concerns. I was at the hearing on Monday uh, about um, uh, whether or not uh, doing this pipeline makes sense. 
Uh, I'm not confident it does make sense. I have true concerns about it, and um, I don't believe necessarily uh, that the Department of Environmental Control should issue the appropriate licenses to let this happen. However, we're not in a position, in my estimation today, to say to the Department of Environmental Conservation not to do it because we have not had the opportunity to do deliberate on, to do uh, duly deliberate on this. So for that reason and for that reason alone, not on the merits, I abstain on the unnumbered pre-considered resolution and I vote aye on the remainder. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilman Yeager. Levin. Commissioner, explain my vote. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. I just want to thank you and uh, committee staff and legislative staff, uh, Tears and Nasser, Jeff Baker, Samira Swanson, um, for um, uh, a really extraordinary effort here uh, to, I believe, get the most far reaching uh, climate legislation out of a locality anywhere in the world. Uh, and um, and I believe this is the most impactful legislation um, that we'll be passing this term. Um, it will uh, put New York City, it'll stake New York City's uh, long-term claim on doing our part to reduce carbon emissions and confront the global crisis of climate change. And this is us doing our part. And um, we acknowledge that it's not going to be painless, um, that there are going to be impacts. Uh, I know that you have been thoughtfully uh, considering those impacts for the last two years or more um, and going through in, uh, in very uh, close detail uh, what, what this legislation will do, where the costs are going to be, but where the ultimate benefits will be as well. And um, we owe it to our children uh, and our children's children to, um, to leave them a world that is, um, at the very least, no worse than the one that we inherited. And this is us doing our part uh, to achieve that. And I hope that the message gets out uh, far and wide that if New York City can do this, uh, that, that every other jurisdiction in the United States can do it as well. So with that, I, I proudly vote aye on all, and I congratulate you on this remarkable landmark legislation. Thanks. By a vote Thank of six. Thanks, Levin. By, a vote, by a vote of six in the affirmative, zero on the negative, and no abstentions, all items have been adopted by the committee with preconceived resolution being adopted by the committee, five in the affirmative, zero on the negative, and one abstention. So with that, I'll gavel this committee hearing closed.